Greetings, adventures. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you are, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to read some of this lore. This is from God of War Ragnarok. I don't have everything unlocked. Um, and, you know, if people end up liking these videos and want me to make sure I read all of them, then I'll read all of them. But for now, I'm just going to read through some of them. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy some of this lore. Let's start with friends and foes. Uh, we have Charlie, I think is how it's pronounced. Freya must have been so obsessed with hunting us that she neglected her giant turtle house, her so-called friend. When I first saw Charlie out in the cold, I thought he might be dead. He's alive, but he's freezing out there alone. I lit a fire to keep him warm, but he's going to need someone to stay with him full time if he's going to survive much longer. Next up, we've got Jormungandr. We haven't seen Jormungandr since Fimble Winter began. I was beginning to think he'd left the Lake of Nine, somehow. But Sindri's nose was right. The World Serpent woke up when I called. But when I asked him about Loki and what I should do, all he had to say was Yarnvior. Not helpful. No idea what Ironwood means, but it was still nice to see him again. Here we got Freya, familiar face. Well, our chat wasn't all I hoped for, but it actually could have gone much worse. At least now I know she doesn't want to kill me. Not really. She seemed interested to learn about Odin visiting and Tyr being alive, and me being the last giant, and especially about realm travel being unlocked. Really not sure what she's going to do next, but hopefully I won't be using all the information I just gave her to attack us again. Yeah, I really didn't think this through. Here we got Skolder. If I pronounce some of these wrong, I apologize. Skolder lives outside the walls of Asgard in a camp of refugees from Midgard. I guess Odin actually saved a lot of people from the desolation, even though he caused it. I wouldn't have believed that, but I can tell Soldier's honest. Sojour's honest. He's nice, funny, about my age. I didn't come to Asgard to make friends, but maybe I already have. Here we got Hugin and Munin. These two aren't like the spies we see around the realms. Hugin and Munin are Odin's own weird magical pets. Back at the house, I saw them disappear into his tattoos. Mimir told me once how they came to be that way, how they were normal ravens once, until Odin captured their whole unkindness. Most of them he roasted and ate for supper, but on Hungin and Munin he experimented, wiping their memories and binding them to his will. Mimir also referred to them as ripe pricks, even for birds. There's Heimdall. Heimdall, the bearer of Galahorn. Mimir said he was dangerous, a true believer of Odin. He didn't mention what a complete jerk he is, or that he seems able to read people somehow. The less time I spend around this guy, the better. There's Odin. After all the terrible things I've heard about Odin, I never expected him to be so respectful of me. Back at the cabin, when he invited me to Asgard, and since arriving here, he seems genuinely interested to know who I am and what I think. I know I can't trust him too far, but it seems nice to be listened to. I feel safer around him than I thought I would. Let's see what answers he has for me. Remember, most if not all of these are from Atreus's perspective. Next up we have Sif. Meeting Sif was really uncomfortable. She was so icy towards me, I started to worry she knew what I did to Modi. But I know nobody saw that. It's bad enough that she blames father, and now I'm in her home. If I know what's good for me, and I think I do, I'll just stay out of her way. Thrud. I'd heard Magni and Modi had a sister, but I'd forgotten about it until she had her sword in my face. Thankfully, she's nothing like them. The way she talks about Modi, and how she's better off without him, makes me realize what it must have been like growing up around such a creepy bully. Still weird sleeping in his room, 
but Thread seems great, and I hope I can get to know her better. I guess there's good people even among the Aesir gods. And Ingrid. The sword. I found a magic sword in Odin's study. He says her name is Ingrid and that I can carry her while I'm here. She seems really happy to be getting out and seeing some action. Do swords get bored? I wonder where she came from. Thor. I never heard any stories about Loki and Thor going on adventures together. This may be the strangest part of this whole trip. Thor doesn't seem happy about it, or anything else for that matter, but it's what Odin wants and that means Thor will do it. Even if he'd rather smash me with his hammer instead. Hopefully while I'm here I can figure him out a little better. Angbroda. There's a girl here in Ironwood. Her name is Angbroda, and she's the same age as me. A giant, too. She's really funny, and she paints, and is friends with the wolves here. She's unlike anyone I've ever met in so many different ways. She says she has been waiting her whole life to meet me, which sounds so crazy. It's actually a lot of pressure to try to meet whatever expectation she has of me. I just need to stay calm and get a better feel for everything that's going on here. But wow, so much is happening so fast. Yala. And... Ang Broda has a yak named Yala. Yak named Yala. <laughs> it was funny. She said, I want you to meet someone. And I thought for a moment there might be more giants. But she meant Yala. I get the sense Yala might be her best friend, which maybe sounds sad, I guess. But I think it's kind of amazing. Makes me miss Fenrir. Though I also still feel like he's with me somehow. I wish she could have met him. It must be lonely living here, but I know how much it helps, having a connection to animals. Yeah, Fenrir's still with him. Tune in to the series to see what I mean. Here we got... Isa? First the wolves, then a yak, and now a magical fox with huge ears, and Broda sure has a lot of animal friends. During our race rematch, Isa was fast, like, really fast even with Ingbroda on her back. I almost kept up with her, but yeah, I still lost. It felt good to finally be in control of my wolf form, though. I just had to think about Ingbroda and what she must be feeling. Holding on to, I don't know, compassion or something to keep the rage in check? Huh, I wonder if that's how Father does it. Okay, Grilla. Grilla is Ingbroda's grandmother. Normally I would be so excited at the thought of meeting one of the only other remaining giants, but she and Agbroda's relationship is strained, to say the least. Not in the way Father and I were before our journey. But it sounds like Grilla did something to hurt Angbroda. She said Grilla changed after Angbroda's father refused to challenge his fate. Earlier we saw a soulless animal. Is she taking the souls of living things? Angbroda said Grilla is lost, and from what I could see, she's right. She can't take the souls of animals anymore, but that isn't the end of her story. I hope she and Angbroda can eventually fix things. Angbroda deserves to support family just as much as Grilla does. That's it for friends and foes. Next up we've got lore markers. Unsafe roads. Careful, traveler. This road leads to Nyfler. Nyfler. Sure. But so too does it lead to dangers beyond mention. If you give a damn about your own safety, you will find an alternate route to the City of Iron. Should you succeed, find me so I can spread the word of whichever route you took that didn't end with you getting your skin peeled off your body by something hungry and pissed off. Derlin. Cooperation. We built this realm with our dwarven hands, reinforced it with dwarven muscle, innovated it with our dwarven minds, but we no longer have to do it alone. Our strength and ingenuity, ingenuity has finally found an equal in the Aesir of Asgard. Now, dwarven smiths will work hard in hand with Aesir soldiers and engineers. Now, Aesir backs will share the burden with their dwarven brethren, lightening the load for us all. It was dwarves who made Svartalfheim what it is, but together with the Aesir, we can make it into something even better. This one's nice and short. It's titled Warning. If you can read this, return to work. 
Regarding the removal of resources. 1. When making your initial strike, use an axe, not a pick. You use a pick, you go too deep, you get red flow. You get red flow, somebody has to clean it up. 2. Pre-dawn remains the best time to harvest. Grogginess and disorientation are still a major factor before the sun comes up, so the chance of accidents becomes much lower. 3. Always wear earplugs. The desert of our ignorance. So much of who we are is lost. Not just this desiccated leviathan, nor its ilk, but the very identity of this creature is knowledge forgotten. Was it a predator? A wraith of the barrens to be feared and avoided? Or perhaps a gentle behemoth, tamed by the pre-division elves and farmed for meat? The answer is a grain of sand in the desert of our ignorance. Our history remains buried beneath generations of dead elves. Should another manage to rise above our mal malignant dogma and search for answers, let these bones serve as a warning. If nothing changes, we will remain forgotten. The Consul. The Tower's Purpose. Though it now serves as a military outpost, this tower's architecture indicates a different function in the time before the division of light and dark. I could find no mention within the archives, which is not altogether unusual. Many of the texts within have been sanitized across generations. But the very absence of any information is telling, in and of itself. What sacrilegious ceremonies were held here, so inimical to our current status quo, that the librarians eradicated all mention of this tower's true purpose? I can't help but assume the answer is the key to a lasting peace. The Consul. U Necher Liker. I have no idea if I said that right. Two ghoulins sit in the front of this marker that says, Unnatural. They are tied to a sled and completely calm. Strange. How long have they sat here? They are just as well behaved as Specky and Svana. Gulen Cole. Thanks to the opposition's grotesque hypocrisy, Alfheim's Gulen are a threat to our livelihood. Livelihood. Though I have culled many on the surface, there are undoubtedly more down below in the Dark Elves' hovels. So long as we deny them access to our light, the pair at the desert's entrance shall remain the only docile version of these foul beasts. Let them remain. They will serve as useful subjects for further light infusion experimentation. The Maven. The Enlightened One. In honor of the Enlightened One, may his gift shine eternal. May his light serve as a beacon of harmony. May peace endure among the elves as we forever bask in its radiant glow. Bjarg Stormer. Casualties caused, 43 dwarven, 22 other. Method of imprisonment, Knott's Slumber. Prison location, Alfheim. Date of release, not applicable. It's a troll. Rehabilitation isn't possible. Feel free to use a rousing relic if you're desperate to get your skull caved in. Imprisonment overseen by Alvis Stonefoot Svartelheim, otherwise known as he who is running out of patience for writing these reports. Rules of the Sanctum All visitors must observe strict silence inside the library, even in the vestibule, passageway, grand hall, mezzanine, and upper circle. No books are to leave the premises for any reason under penalty of death. Transcriptions of any material within the library are expressly forbidden. Damage to library materials due to carelessness, including creases, folds, annotations, and such like, even accidental, will not be tolerated. Comestibles, libations, and liquids of any kind are forbidden. Visitors must check in with the present librarian before leaving the library. Failure to adhere to the rules will result in immediate punishment to be determined by the present librarian. The Arbiters of Knowledge We are the caretakers of truth. 
the arbiters of knowledge, protectors of this repository of enlightenment that stretches back to our earliest writings, ancient as the sands. It is our sacred duty to protect our elven learnings and prevent the possible spread of it to those who cannot reconcile the wisdom found within these walls. The benighted, the benighted masses cannot be trusted, cannot be expected to assimilate these truths. They lack the intellectual fortitude to absorb and accept the divisive nature of certain revelations. This suppression is not cruelty, nor is it an attempt to control. It is mercy, pure and simple. Never forget that. Harmony. In a realm of peace, there is only one crime. A disruption of that peace. Look about you. The land and its people in harmony, in balance. As constant as the sun and moon. Yet balance is precarious. Balance is easily lost. Cruelty, vanity, selfishness, these are the forces that would disrupt Vanaheim's harmony. These are the forces of the Aesir. We are a peaceful people, but peace cannot endure without force to protect it. Dead on arrival. A warning to all who pass the spit of land. The dead here do not die. Rain or shine, in the heat of the day and the chill of the night, they follow their master's will. Leave now, whether you value your life or peace in your death. You do not want the prison of this magic. Necromancy haunts the dirt beneath your feet. Garden's Progress Gala Bushes Four planted, anticipating first berry harvest next winter. Favor petals, red, six planted, one currently wilting, may need to be moved for more sun exposure. Favor petals, blue, six planted, all blooming favorably. Favor petals, yellow, six planted, three seem to be struggling. We'll apply extra fertilizer with eggshells and crushed drake bone and hope for improvement. Burn pathway. Filling in nicely, new fronds may need a trim next moon cycle. Topiary fencing, still in search of new caretaker after previous one's sudden departure. Green bulb tree, acquisition still in progress, unsure if roots will take outside of their home realm. Call to arms, to the Vanner of Vanaheim. My sister has abandoned us. Odin has turned our realm into a prison, and Freya has fled with the key. There is only one path forward, and it will not be a pleasant one. We will take up arms. We will show the Aesir whose realm this is. We will go to war. Freyr. Living Masterpiece. There is truly no greater medium than a living, thriving tree. Every branch of canvas, this mighty elder and I work in tandem to achieve the impossible. My hand perhaps guides, my ties and forms persuade a pattern, but it is through this sacred giant's prosperity does my work take shape. May my art always go over the heads of all those who would try to look upon it. It is not for you. Cedar Sacrifice I fear devotion is waning amongst the others. If we are to drive the Aesir from Vanaheim, there are things we must do without hesitation. Sacrifices must be made, and if I am the only practitioner with enough courage to make them, then so be it. In life do I scream, in death do I sing, and blood do I trust. I am the vengeance of these lands. Anything I can do. No one said this journey would be easy. Yet I do find myself questioning how far I thought I'd go to finish the pilgrimage. On the way up, my foot slipped, causing me to stumble. My heart seized in my chest, and I felt I may perhaps perish at the hand of this cliff face. Thankfully, I was able to catch myself, but I suffered a nasty scrape on my knee. I believe blisters may also form on my hands as a result of the rough rocks. My back seems to have also taken to complaining about the pack I have borne for the past few days. While I'm thinking about it, my head has also begun aching. My point here is that if I can make this journey, I believe anyone can as well. The Ceremony The weather has favored us this day. 
The sun shines, and its warm rays ripple through the leaves of the surrounding trees. Juniper leaves have been bound and burned. Their scent hangs joyfully in the air. Guests take their seats. The tinkling of the celebratory laughs fills the hall. Anticipation for the ceremony builds as the hour draws near. The Feast the table is filled. Delicacies of both Vanir and Aesir origin have been prepared to symbolize the union of peoples. Succulent fruits to whet the appetites served alongside the salted, crisp skin of young hens. Gourds roasted and then sauced in honey and breads baked in the lava pits of Elja will be presented as the second course. An offering of Semreher. An offering of Sir, of Sirimer, Sir, Sir Imner. An offering of Sirmener has taken the center of the spread, although many Vanir will likely refuse to partake. Nuggets of tender meat for the little ones have been piled high. They will not go hungry tonight. Last but certainly not least, casks, casks of mead have been rolled out in great numbers to account for the thirst such festivities bring upon their guests. Tonight we dine as if Ragnarok will come for us in the morning. The Auburn Crown. Vanir tradition is bound in the plates of our Freya's hair as final touches are made for the ceremony. Bloodbird blooms to adorn her locks and lupin oil to make them shine. Fronds bound around the circlet she wears breathe life into the metal. She is resplendent as the rains on a summer morn. The Blessing of Two A blessing on the union of Freya and Odin on this day. Prosperity to the people of the Vanaheim and Asgard. As the sun shines and the moon glows, so shall the realms remain steadfast in peace. Gulrab of the Ashes and Frost Casualties caused, think of a large number, then double it. Method of imprisonment, knots, slumber. Prison location, Vanaheim. Date of release, nah. The trolls devoured too many dwarves to count before I put them to sleep. I doubt they'd be in a better mood after getting slapped with a rousing relic. Imagine being stuck in the same position for any period of time. Burr. Imprisonment overseen by Elvis Stonefoot Svartalheim. Alright, we are now on Ruin Reads. Winterman? Kill Winterman. The runes appear to be the work of raiders, but I do not know the Winterman. Their attacks have increased of late. Perhaps he is the source of their agitation. Traitor. Found outside a ruined temple in Vanaheim. Many of the realm's buildings came to ruin due to natural disaster or the Einar Jar. Freya's temple has fallen for different reasons. It appears that after she left Vanaheim, her own followers vandalized the very temple they once gifted her. Her people saw her marriage as a betrayal, a cowardly way to pass judgment on her actions. Prayer to Freya. May Freya never waver. Freya's people loved her deeply. They seem to have abandoned this village long ago, whether by choice or by force is unclear. But I feel the words have soured in her absence. Vanaheim Lullaby I bless the rains of Vanaheim. Words from a traditional Vanaheim song. In Greece, the rain served as a reminder to worship the gods. Do the people of these lands worship the rain alongside their gods? Broken History Graffiti in Dark Elf territory, next to a statue of their ancestors, the elves before the division of light and dark. The message being, what exactly, and for who? Either the elves have seen the statue and ignored it, or they're more concerned with mastery over the light. Sacrifice. No sacrifice in vain. A corpse lay below this one. I wonder if the poor soul wrote it before expiring, or if it was written by the fiend who caused said expiration patience found deep within dark elf cave they must use these as outposts to launch raids on the temple 
A useful spot to watch their enemy and plan their next assault. The Forge. Forge ahead. Could be a lighthearted jape or another expression of the dwarves resentment of Odin's grip on Svortlheim. Is progress truly progress if made under an oppressor? The Pit Mine. Asgard Svortlheim Mining Cooperative. I was not the one to coin this particular equivocation. This one has to respect the pure, emotionless language that paints over decades of systematic slaughter and oppression. The Vault. Vault Vista. Don't know what to tell you. Not everything's got a thrilling story behind it. Sometimes people just label things exactly what they are. Don't breathe. Mind your breath. Could be referring to the polluted air of the bay, or a warning against speaking ill of Odin. Both equally likely, in my opinion. The Squasher. Codlin Squasher of Wretches killed a nest of twenty here. A legend or boast, I wonder. I wish this Codlin was around to enlighten us with their strategies. And lastly... We have scrolls here. Dear Overseer, It is with shame and sadness that I must report I will be unable to meet your requested quota for this season. I am simply unable to forge armor of the quality and quantity you have requested. The fault of this, of course, is mine alone. I very much hope that my awareness of this fact might incline you to show some degree of leniency. As it stands, my output has measurably reduced since the injuries I sustained after previously failing to meet your quota. I would argue, respectfully, as always, that further physical punishment would only further harm my productivity. I eagerly await your response. Wow. Shopping list. Don't want to hear any more about shortages. Aesir got exactly what we need. My work shouldn't have to suffer just because they get off on being withholding. Anyway, I need a barrel of oil, as many bundles of firewood as can be spared, five ingots of pure Svoltheim steel, and oh yeah, goddamn food to goddamn eat. An examination of temporal significance. This evening I find myself musing on the scent of a book. When the paper is fresh, it carries the gentle notes of the plants it came from. Light, floral, with a touch of sweetness. As time passes, the pages age. They take on their brittle tan. A tear forms from any force stronger than the softest of touches. The scent hardens, crisp as the beginning, moving into the earthly musk left behind from dust, desert air, and insect feasts. To these ephemera, nearly as impermanent as ourselves, do we entrust the collective knowledge of our elven histories. Is this venture foolish? I concede the fleeting nature of existence, be it of flesh or scroll, yet I would not trade the pleasure of putting ink to page for all the treasures of Alfheim, the consul. The Bifrost Bridge I know it is not uncommon to hear the voices of those we have lost in the light, so I decided to run one little experiment. With the permission of the temple's guardian, of course. I was missing my beloved Astriker, something terrible, and thought perhaps if I could hear him one last time, I'd feel more at peace. I packed up some of his favorite things. His blanket, the stuffed tatzel worm I enchanted to squeak when squeezed, an odd, and an old drake bone with the teeth marks still imprinted, and set them down near the light to see if I could perhaps call to his soul. I sat quietly for quite some time. I called to him. It was very difficult to confirm, but after a while I swear I could hear the distant sound of his paws on wood, gentle clicking from his nails, just the way they used to sound at home. They grew close. My heart beat faster in anticipation, but as soon as the sound started, they faded and I heard no more. Perhaps I will try again one day, but for now I will choose to believe he has found joy in the light and needs the comforts of his old life no more. I'm glad for him. On Galahorn. Galahorn represents the only known exception to the principle of bilateral harmonization in realm travel. 
Instead of portal bridging the space between two realms, it is capable of rendering simultaneous passage between any number of realms. Provided the existing infrastructure is established and the horn is powered by the breath of a su sufficiently powerful god. The Ashen God. It is the Ashen God's fault. She told us. The witch. Said the Ashen God murdered Balder and in so doing started Fimblewinter. She said if the god dies, Fimblewinter will end. No more night. No more cold. No Ragnarok. We ran out of food a week ago. No matter. Soon we will feast on god flesh. The tree. Mother said the other races of the nine realms look at the world as individual trees in a forest. They see people in nature and time. They see people in nature and time and destiny as separate elements, but not us. The Jotnar know that these are all branches of the same tree, that you can't separate love from fate from the flap of a bird's wings without harming the tree itself. Maybe that's why I saw no fear in her eyes when she talked about walking her path, when she talked about her impending death. Sometimes that comforts me, knowing her and father's passings were just one branch in a great and ever-growing tree. Other times, I just miss them. Paints. Bark. Base. Brownish. Vistru. Mixed with river water. Dark red. Sun daisy. Yellow or dilute to add brightness to any other color. Retchberry, bluish. Green bulbs, duh. Abandoned. I gave you everything, my faith, my love, offerings beyond measure, and you abandoned me, abandoned us, abandoned your home. Why? So you could gallivant across the realms with the one-eyed king? Did we sicken you so, your pathetic worshippers, that you would take the first opportunity to leave and never return? I did not know true loneliness until now, nor did I know true rage. I would revenge myself upon you, but you are not here to receive my hate. And so instead I, and so many as will join me, will go to that temple we built for you so long ago, the monument to our gullibility and your selfishness and we will do to it what we can only hope one day to do to you non-violence this will end in blood the only question that remains is which side is willing to spill more the Aesir are not known for their mercy just ask the giants yet our realm is split between those with half a brain and those who believe that pacifism in action will somehow win the day these Vanir would be kicked in the teeth and apologize for spilling their blood on the in here in her jar's boots. We have tried to reason with these. What other word is there? Cowards. They cannot be swayed. They will not help us muster a resisting force in numbers of any real meaning. And so what else can we do? What else but entreat the Cedar magics to do what they will not? There are dangers to the old magics, yes, but can anyone say with confidence that they outweigh the dangers of doing nothing at all? Perhaps we will change, perhaps our minds will fall to pieces, but if that is the price we pay for striking back against the Aesir, it is one we pay gladly. And, uh, that's all the lore. There's obviously a lot of other stuff to read. And like I said, uh, if people like this video, I'll do some more reading. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.